John Lutz, Executive Director of Elder Services of Berkshire County, and this is Berkshire Senior TV. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we've got two events we want to talk about today that are going to be coming up in April and May uh, that we think you'll find very interesting and hopefully be able to participate in. So we're going to start out today uh, something we've never done. We're going to have two different sets of guests, so hopefully this will be invisible to you and we'll be able to do this without too much uh, of a circus act involved. So first we want to start out with our friends from the City of Pittsfield and the RSVP program, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, John. My name is Jeff. I'm the director for the Retired Senior Volunteer Program. And I'm Andrew, uh, Andrew Gagnon, the volunteer coordinator for RSVP. And we'll just start with, before we get to the event, let's just start with RSVP, Retired Senior Volunteer Program. What's that and why is it with the City of Pittsfield? So we're a grant-funded program from the federal government under Senior Corps, who is sponsored by the City of Pittsfield. Um, those combined make up our budget. We recruit volunteers and bring them throughout um, to nonprofits throughout Berkshire County. Um, they work within the city and the school departments, um, with elder services. Um, they're everywhere, nonprofit organizations, museums, uh, Barrington Stage Company, places like that. We also provide our own transportation service, which getting seniors to their medical appointments um, Monday through Friday. Which is always a big challenge in Berkshire County, especially yes. this time of year. So I know there's a particular event you'd like to talk about, so let's talk about that first to make sure we get that covered and we'll go from there. Sure, um, so this is gonna be our first year. It's a volunteer recruitment exposition. It is replacing our open house, which was more of a recognition. Um, you know, we've, we're looking to recruit more volunteers throughout the year to keep up our, the, the numbers throughout Berkshire County to, in the volunteerism. Um, so it's on April 5th, it's at 1.30 at the Senior Center. Um, we're, we're Senior gonna, Center in Pittsfield. In Pittsfield, yes, uh, 330 North Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a bunch of the stations come out. Our stations are like Elder Services, Barrington Stage Company, like I had explained. We're going to talk about all the services that they need where they need people. Um, we're going to have refreshments, raffles, um, and just a general information session trying to recruit new volunteers. Now, will that be, uh, um, it's at the Froyo Center. Yes. Uh, and so when uh, someone wants, if someone's interested and they just come, but you're going to have an array of all, lots of other volunteer opportunities as well. Yeah. That's so, what you mean when you say a station. Yeah, a station. So for instance, if Elder, elder Service was to be a station at the exposition, you'll have all the information material. You're trying to also recruit volunteers where, because I know you, you utilize mm -hmm. a lot of yep. our volunteers and vice versa, um, that you can explain the benefits of volunteerism, why you need it, what you need help in, and just it's an informational session for everybody. So um, when RSVP, say someone's interested, what is kind of the process that they would go through? Um, they can come down to our office at 16 Bartlett Avenue. We're in the, uh, we're, we have a building or a, an office within the Anthenaeum. Oh. So right outside of the parking lot, we have our little office. Um, you can come in, talk with Andrew. He's a volunteer coordinator. He is, he has all the openings where we are sending our volunteers. He, you can talk with him and kind of learn, um, teach him what you want and he can try to place you in the appropriate place. And um, Andrew, when someone comes, uh, what are the basic things that they need to be able either to do or not? I mean, what are the basics that they should have uh, before they come if, if to be able to be a volunteer? Well, uh, when people do first come, uh, we put them through a, an application. Um, with that, they'll just need basic information and a driver's license. Um, from there, we, we run some uh, criminal history checks and some background checks, um, but after that, uh, they can just find a volunteer uh, opportunity that interests them, and uh, we can just get the ball rolling from there. And when, when someone does actually volunteer, they're volunteering for you? Are they volunteering for the non Where are they actually volunteering, or where, where are they being kind of monitored or, or directed by? So we are like a clearinghouse. We're okay. funding volunteers for the various agencies. Um, we are grant funded, so us finding those volunteers are beneficial for us getting our grant on a, on a yearly basis. Um, but we work closely with, with each agency. Um, they reach out to us, ask us to find volunteer placements for particular areas. Um, then we, you know, we send out large amounts of emails and on our uh, Facebook page and we try to get people in and, and fill those slots. 
and uh, is there an age limit or age requirement? Um, <laughs> technically, we are 55 and up. Okay. Um, however, if you want to come in and volunteer, we're not going to turn you away. Okay. We can't use those numbers towards our grant, but we'd be happy to have any sort of volunteerism. What types of opportunities do you have that are probably um, the most difficult to fill? Um, our van drivers. Mm -hmm. So we operate Monday through Friday between 8 and, I guess, 2.30 or so is our usually our latest um, appointment uh, pickup or drop off. Uh, we have drivers come in, we have our own van, it's a Honda Odyssey minivan, um, and we bring people to and from their appointments. Um, getting steady drivers has been a, a hurdle. So but you don't have to have a CDL, you don't have to nope, spend, it's, it's just a, a normal it's a driver's passenger, license. Yep. It's a minivan. We're, we are insured, it's our own van, okay. there's nothing you have to worry about, you just, you don't have to walk people to and from their appointments, it's all of our, um, Recipients are people who are able-bodied. They can get in and out of the van. Um, so just driving people from their house to their appointment and their appointment and back. So what would be called typically uh, curb to curb. Curb yeah, to curb, yeah. So yes. you, there's no responsibility taken for, for help someone. Everybody can emulate. Everybody can get to the... Okay. Absolutely. All right. um, what are the types of things, I, I know you mentioned, uh, and I'm aware of, I know you do some things in the public schools. Mm -hmm. uh, what are those kinds of programs like? Uh, <clears throat> so the, the volunteer opportunities at the public schools, for the most part, are um, you know things like reading to children, um, giving a teacher a little bit of a break, a little bit of breathing room, um, and then we also have uh, you know people that do clerical work or filing uh, within the offices. Um, mm -hmm. We work primarily with the elementary schools, but um, we also work with junior achievement, um, and they work with uh, K through 12. Okay. And when someone, uh, I don't know if there's uh, any, are there additional requirements? say, put on uh, for someone to volunteer, say, for in the public schools, obviously safety, those kinds of things. Are there additional uh, applications or clearances that you have to get uh, beyond just coming in and going through your process when you go to the public schools? Uh, when they come to, uh, when the volunteers come to us, we do a, a criminal history check and a Corey check. The schools also, by law, are required to do an additional Corey check. Okay. But beyond that, it's just like any other volunteer opportunity. And that's very, actually very similar to ours, even if you guys have done one, because we are the agency that's responsible, and the person might be, you know, uh, interacting with our consumers. We do that. We are responsible for doing the same. You know, yep. the, the individual agency often has to take, especially if it's going to have uh, contact with an actual consumer Absolutely. or yes. an adult, a child, or whoever. Um, so I want to wrap up and get this, and we're going to move on to our other guest. Uh, any last want to give another reminder about the event you have coming up? So again, our event it's at the Pittsfield Senior Center. It's on April fifth. It's a Thursday at one thirty. And it will be held until 3.30. Um, just come on in, check out what we have for opportunities. If you want to become a volunteer, if you are a volunteer and have a friend who might be interested, it's going to be a big information session. Um, you can just learn about all the things that we do. Well, that is great. And we will certainly let us know if there's anything we can do to help publicize, like today. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Thank and you very uh, much. we'll keep running this all through the month. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to come in and talk about it. And we'll have you back uh, again when you uh, can stay for the whole time. Perfect. And we'll go from there. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're now going to take just a minute to pause and uh, switch over to our other uh, guest.
Welcome back. We've had our uh, transition of guests, and so glad you stuck with us there. So we're going to talk about the event you saw on your screen, the Berkshire Super Genarians, a forum for seniors. Uh, and we'll sure, I'm sure, get an explanation of what a Berkshire supergenarian is at the, by the end of this 16 minutes. Uh, but I want to welcome some new guests, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, Fran, you want to go first? I am Fran, or Francine Weinberg. And I am Mary Jane in Corvia Matina. And I'll just say real quick that uh, these two women uh, have gotten an event going and started uh, purely from grassroots. Uh, Berkshire Senior uh, Elder Services of Berkshire County has been thrilled to help out and offer what assistance we can, but they've gotten lots of other groups involved, as you saw from the flyer, both public and private. Uh, and I think it's going to be a great event coming up in May. Uh, so let's start with the beginning. Um, how do we get to here? What, what, what got you guys going? Well, um, Fran and I are friends. Uh, we're neighbors and we're year-round Berkshire County residents. And about uh, four or five years ago, we started talking about health, wellness, and medical issues. Uh, and um, we started to, to uh, realize that um, we were collecting information sort of on an ad hoc basis. There seemed to be no central dispensary. Uh, we, were, we were getting information uh, from our doctors, sometimes from other friends, um, sometimes from an article uh, in the paper or occasionally uh, something we would hear on WebMD. And we started to think that that was not necessarily the best way of getting this kind of information. And we meant information about how to age well, mm -hmm. how to remain active as one ages and how to keep up with the research of what to do when you no longer are a 30-year-old body, but maybe a 70-year-old body. Right. But it also sounds like there's an element of kind of taking responsibility for your own uh, wellness, and uh, regardless of age, and kind of being aware of what's, what's there to assist you with that. There, there is. Um, uh, we are relatively active and robust 70-year-olds, as hard as that is to believe. I'm here to, I'm here to vouch for that. <laughs> and uh, uh, we would like to stay as robust and healthy for as long as possible. Um, and we know other people, other, other friends of ours, who are in a similar situation. Um, so, so uh, uh, what we decided to do was, was not wait for somebody else to take this on. Uh, because as I like to say, uh, at this point I can see the dark at the end of the tunnel and that might be too long a wait. Um, so we, we started to think about what it was that we could do. And um, uh, we started out rather, rather big and large and we, we um, uh, thought that it might be a good idea to repurpose the Berkshire Mall into a countywide uh, wellness center. But that's pretty big and pretty large. And we sent a letter to the uh, Berkshire Eagle, a letter to the editor, and, uh, but we wanted, you know, we had to hone that down. Um, so then we thought of an all-day um, health and wellness fair uh, with vendors and with speakers. But again, that wasn't anything that we could really accomplish. And finally, we decided on a half-day event, um, and we came up with this uh, um, word, the supergenarians, uh, people who are like us and even in better shape than us, robust, fit, and very eager to stay that way. We know 80-year-olds and 90-year-olds at the gym who put us to shame. Um, and, and so we thought, okay, what could we do? How could we, how could we pull this off? And then, John, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. We met you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and truly, um, you, you opened the door for us, uh, and we're, we're extremely grateful about that. Uh, you made that initial contact with Dr. Mark Pettis, who was one of our speakers, and uh, uh, with uh, Leah Spiliotis mm -hmm. at CHP. And the ball, has, the, the snowball's been building. Um, and we, much to our delight and surprise, it's going to happen as long as we can fill the seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that that's a good segue because I think the next thing would be is who is it that you would want to attend this event? I mean, what, what are you trying to, you know, you know we've got a half day, you've got a great speaker in Mark, and I know you have some other speakers. What, what, what is it that you hope to, to, have the, to have come and leave with? We really want to build on this notion of exchanging information. 
and in a perhaps more orderly, but yet very friendly environment. Medical people and consumers of medical services, wellness services, health services, talking to each other and sharing what they might or what they might not do to stay as active and as alert as they continue moving from being septuagenarians to octogenarians <laughs> to nonagenarians to, to supergenarians. <laughs> okay. Well, and I think, you know, I mean, I know, uh, and certainly Mark, uh, Dr. Pettis is, is the expert, but, you know, even, you know, he's involved in population health and he's, exactly. written, he's written a lot about uh, the fact that a lot of non, you know, what they call the social determinants of health are as much or if not more in some cases more determinant of your general well-being and wellness than even you know medicine and doctors and those kinds of things you know how you approach it can have just as big an impact on the things you're doing again in your own life versus you know formal medicine exactly and that's why taking care of oneself is the text the the concept behind his presentation and as mark pettis has said to us many times, you have to be your own physician, your own best physician. Now, you might want to say something about the other speaker. We have another, a second speaker, uh, Dr. Deborah Pollack, um, and uh, she and her husband, Dr. Daniel Woolman, have a second home in the Berkshires, so they, they are very familiar with the Berkshires. Um, uh, Dr. Woolman has taught an OLLI course. Um, and and uh, they he is actually a geriatrician in the Danbury, Connecticut area, and she specializes in sleep disorders. And um, uh, strangely enough, I think as we age, we sleep less and less less uh, uh, continuously. <laughs> exactly. And so hopefully she she will address some of those issues as well. But. It, this is sort of picking up on Mark Pettis's theme of you're your own best doctor, and perhaps you can partner with your your PCP, and and um, perhaps we can provide a more efficient um, way of dialoguing and getting information to in, the supergenarians. Yeah, in particular, I want to make the point that this will be a um, comfortable exchange of information. Mm -hmm. Everyone will have their clothes on. You won't be sitting <laughs> naked in front of your PCP. This will not be an exam room presentation. The Pittsfield Police Department, I'm happy to hear that that will not be happening. We, we have trouble with parking as it is. So, so, so uh, this will be above and beyond what you might glean from your own primary care physician. This will be uh, an exchange of ideas about taking care of yourself and about improving the quality and quantity of sleep. Well, maybe some people want to decrease the quantity of sleep. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anybody that wants to sleep less. <laughs> but we like. want to underscore also it's free. It's, right. it's, there's no charge. Um, uh, we will have light refreshments. Um, we will have door prizes, um, and uh, uh, if people do want to find out more about the event, it is up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They can search Pittsfield Events Free. Um, Eventbrite. Ev it's, I'm sorry, it's also on Facebook now. Yeah. It's okay. on Eventbrite, oh, okay. um, and, uh, and uh, we also have a, a Gmail uh, uh, address that they can, they can contact us at. And, and we even will answer any question and a phone number. Phone number. Yeah. They, can, they can register. We would prefer, you don't have to come with a ticket, but mm -hmm. we would prefer people to register so one know just how many snacks to order. And, uh, You'll be making cookies, I assume. Uh, <laughs> what did Hillary Clinton say no, about that? That's right. <laughs> so, so um, and we, we do want to also thank, in addition to you, John, and Elder Services, we want to thank uh, Community Health Programs and Leah Spiliotis. We want to thank the Berkshire Bank Foundation, um, Adams Community Bank, October Mountain F uh, Financial Advisors, Greylock Federal, Lee Bank, and then uh, Age Friendly uh, Berkshires and the Berkshire Museum. And uh, without, without all of them, it wouldn't have happened uh, because we certainly didn't want to impinge upon uh, a nonprofit's budget. And just to underscore, Fran and I are, are not a nonprofit. We're not a 501c3. We don't intend to become one. So it was by your good graces that, that we can um, receive 
uh, support, financial support, and we can pay the bills. Well, and, and I think it's important. I mean, obviously, you went to a broad range of folks in the community, and um, you had a message that resonated with them. It I did. Hope so. And yes. why, why do you think that is? Well, one of the what things... What resonated with the people you spoke one to? One of the things Fran we realized... myself. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we realized and came to us as a surprise, it's not where we started, but we realized that just as the Berkshires has a reputation as a great cultural area and has the reputation of being a great natural area, why can't we get the word out that the Berkshires is also a great place to retire to and those who come here to retire, they don't need jobs, but perhaps they can create jobs. For sure. In, in the medical community, in the finance community. Fitness communities, yeah. sure. And so maybe some of the uh, depletion of population in Berkshire County can be reversed if we all work together to make it clear that Berkshire County is a wonderful place to retire to and your medical wellness and fitness needs will be met. Well, and I think the the... the counter to that is also it's a great place to retire and stay. Ah, uh, yes. and, I, and I think, you know, there's a big population of folks here now that are either are retired, near retirement, um, and certainly, you know, it's a great place, you know, with services, and I think, I think that's the part that, that resonated with us, was this is kind of on the spectrum of opportunities to enhance what's available to people who want to stay in Berkshire County, live mm -hmm. independently as possible, exactly. stay at home, and this is just another Absolutely. you know link in that chain of you know along the along this continuum of trying to create a community mm. that has the kinds of things that a broad array of people might want. And it's and and out, this population segment, the 50, 60, 70 year olds, is one of the few segments, if not the only one that is growing in Berkshire mm. County. And it's not only growing because people are aging in place, but there is a trickle. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that trickle can become um, uh, a tsunami. Well, that <laughs> would be nice. Not quite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and I think you're right. I mean, there are very real uh, economic benefits of creating this kind of environment within, you know, using the assets we already have, natural assets, cultural assets, uh, those kinds of things. I, I think, you know, there's a real... Um, symbiotic relationship that can start Good between word. those kinds of things of, hey, these are all helping each other. There's no one silver bullet that's going to say, oh, this is going to send us back to the top. But there might be a lot of little things that might contribute, like, hey, this is, you know, you can have a pretty good quality of life here, and there's an affordable price, and, and, and there's good culture, and there's good uh, wellness, and those kinds of things. There could be a nice synergy right. uh, uh, amongst all these groups. And, and we honestly think, we believe that that is a, a distinct possibility, because the Berkshires it's, are not only a place, they're also a way of life. Right. And, and somebody said to me in the gym the other day, I am so happy I live here. And it's really quite Even on days like last Friday? <laughs> well. <laughs> it can't be nice all the time. I it think. has its own beauty. <laughs> Particularly when you don't have to commute, John. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So, um, so we're a couple months from now. It's the day after your event. What, what do you want to be able to think, look on, say, wow, that was really great yesterday? What, what's going to tell you that? I think if people, well, first of all, if we fill the seats. Well, yeah. uh, uh, but also if people... Um, Leave the Berkshire Museum and say, I learned something here. There's, there's something here that I can take with me that will positively impact my life. Um, and, and also, if people really do want to contribute and suggest, what else would they like to see? What other content would they like to have? And again, if we can pull, there's a lot going on in the Berkshires, but somehow or other, it's scattered. And if there were some way of coalescing a lot of these wonderful programs and events, uh, and if, if this could be part of it, uh, I think we would say we have something here. So it would be not only the supergenarian forum, but it might be a supergenarian movement. So, Well said. <laughs> and I would just add that uh, what I'd like to say the day after this event is Let's do it again. <laughs> maybe and, then in a few I'll, <laughs> and then I'll say to Fran, are you sure? Yeah, not, not next week, but maybe in my, a My point being that we don't want this to be a one-off. No, mm -hmm. it would be We'd, very we'd nice. like it to be the beginning of an ongoing series 
to, as we said at the beginning, have a uh, comfortable and organic place where we can exchange information and not just collect data about how to age in an erratic, accidental fashion. I think it's also the idea of not, not stopping to do another study. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, but but to get moving, and even if this first one isn't perfect, it's at least on the road um, to moving forward, and that's that would be very rewarding to us. Well, and I think you know, as I said, I mean, our interest is you know we have a countywide perspective, and we mm -hmm. try and offer things that that, mm -hmm. uh, that folks are going to be interested in along the whole aging spectrum. Uh, yes, whether they're mm -hmm. younger elders or older elders, and. Or, in or anywhere in between, you know, we try and support those. And I, and I think, you know, for us, that was part of the attraction of this is something that's going to be attractive to a particular segment, maybe bring some other people in who maybe hadn't thought about it, uh, appeals across the whole county. So, uh, you know, I, I think that was why, and I'm sure that's why Leah and others, you know, it, it was obviously a great idea uh, because it, it attracts a wide, a wide array of folks that could, could benefit from it and immediately build on, on perhaps your next event. And, and, you know, we do have the same um, b barriers that a lot of activities in the Berkshires have, and that's transportation. Right. I mean, that's going to be an issue, uh, bringing people from Clarksburg and from Sheffield uh, to Pittsfield. We have ideas for future events addressing that specifically, but um, if anybody has uh, suggestions as to how that transportation issue might be ameliorated, We'd love to hear about them. Well, uh, let's work together on that because okay. maybe we can put you in touch with some people. But also, uh, it'll be a little easier in the May than it will be tomorrow. Oh, yes. We hope. <laughs> we hope. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and thank you both for being thank here. Thank you, And John. we'll uh, see you next time on Berkshire Senior TV. Until quarter to three, would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64?